Hello, hello. So one of the interesting topics that came out of the Elixir Types uh, conference talk and also Jose now published a blog post in the Elixir Line website is the concept of strong arrows. And it's a really cool way that they're trying to address some of the gradual typing issues. So whenever you have a language like Elixir, you have a dynamic language. When you introduce types, you want to introduce it gradually, right? You don't want to have to immediately convert the whole code base and type every single uh, function signature. So in order to do that, you have to introduce types gradually. But that presents some problems. Let's let's say we have these um, two functions in our code base. So we have a debug function. As you can tell here, it takes an argument and it returns we got, and then it does some uh, binary string concatenation kind of thing. And then it's calling the identity function. Now suppose in a different part of our code base, we have this identity function that we've added a type for, right? So a type signature. And we're saying it returns the identity, just the same thing, but only when it's a number. So the question is, how do we type this debug function? How does the compiler do it implicitly, right? By default, this would look something like this. It would use a dynamic type, which means it's really not typed. It's going to be determined at compile time. And the question is, what do we return here? So one possibility is that this just returns dynamic, right? The issue with this is that these kinds of dynamic types then propagate throughout your entire system at compile time. And so it's really difficult to type anything because as you introduce things, everything is dynamic. So um, any function that calls debug will also have to return dynamic, regardless of what's happening inside that function, because debug is turning dynamic, right? So that's one of the problems. Uh, the alternative would be to do something like uh, call this number, right? Because we know this is returning number. But that is a little confusing because if you actually call debug with, say, hello, we know as Elixir developers that this is going to return, we got hello, right? So at runtime, this works. But at compile time, this would fail because it would be saying, hey, this is supposed to return a number because this returns a number and we're using it in here. So at compile time, it would fail, but at runtime, it would work. So there's a discrepancy there between what you can do at compile time and what you can do at runtime. And that's just confusing. Um, and so we want to do something better. And this is where, where strong arrows come in. So another approach that Elixir is looking at is suppose this identity function, we actually add an, a guard clause, right? We say when is number. Well, now at runtime, we're 100% sure that it's going to only work with numbers. So in fact, if we pass anything that's not a number, and that's an important concept, it's the negation of a number. And, and set theory. So if we pass anything that's not a number, this will fail. And so uh, our debug function can now confidently say, if you pass in dynamic, it's going to return a number, because we know with certainty that if we pass anything that's not a number, this will fail. And so that's the concept of strong arrows. It's the negation of the arguments that are being passed. If that is going to raise an error, then that's called a strong arrow. Right? But this is not only applicable with guard clauses. This also happens with regular um, operators. So for example, what if we have a warn debug here, another debug statement that says uh, warning, and uh, we do something like this, right? Well, because Elixir is strongly typed in the sense that it's, you know, function operators aren't doing uh, implicit type coercion, we know that this only works with binaries. And so the, the compiler can implicitly type this as returning a binary. Right. So even though this doesn't have a guard clause, we can do that because this is true. The same is true of uh, things like, say, increment. Let's just pass increment here. Because this doesn't work with, for example, binaries, you can't do a binary plus and another binary. Right. You can do things like that in uh, JavaScript and Ruby and things like that. Because you can't do that in Elixir, then we know for sure uh, it, when you pass a dynamic, it can return a number. And so. By doing this, these strong arrows prevent the sort of leaking of dynamic types throughout the code base. And it also ensures that the compile time and runtime behaviors match uh, together, right? Now, there are a couple more cases and also some talk about false positives that Jose discusses in that blog post, and I recommend you check it out. But I love this because it just goes on to show how thoughtful and careful Jose and the Elixir team are being about adding types to Elixir. I hope you like it.